So in our series of what we're seeing, we're going to explore a very, very, very real life concept here called corrosion. Because if you have silverware at home, you know that, you know, after a while they turn black. Have you ever wondered why, why does that happen? If you've had, if you've seen copper, after a while it gets a very, very peculiar green coating over it. If you've seen very, very old copper bridges, you might notice a green coating. Yeah. Near the water. Now that's moss. All right. Yeah. That's not what we're talking about. So if you have not seen that, if you see copper, you begin to see a green coating over it. And if you see iron, yeah, iron, we all know this, right? A brown flaky thing that appears on top of it. Yeah. It's called rust. Now, you might begin to wonder, what is it that causes these? And you, with the knowledge of chemistry you have, you might even infer that these must be some kind of chemical reactions. Now, it turns out that in the case of silver, it reacts with sulfur to form silver sulfide, and that's the black color coating. And in the case of copper, it forms copper carbonate, yeah, by reacting with the atmosphere around, and that's the green coating that you get. And in the case of iron, of course, we get rust. But now, what's the formula of rust? We'll go into it a little later. But what we're going to do right now is uh, find out what conditions under which, or rather under what conditions does iron rest, iron rust. So let's test this out, right? You keep iron somewhere outside, we can see that it rusts. But we want to see if it's more moist, it seems to rust more. So we want to see what conditions exactly affect this. So let's make an experiment. Take three test tubes, right? In the first one, you keep iron. Dip it in water, just, just put a cork over it and leave it. So iron is exposed to air and water. It's just as if it's outside. But in the second case, you completely immerse the iron so that it's completely in water. It's completely immersed in water. And then add a layer of oil to this water so that there is no air exchange happening. Great. So that's our second one. In the third case, take a test tube and completely remove all the water, make it completely dry and add calcium chloride, which is a drying agent. So anhydrous calcium chloride so that even any moisture present in the air is removed and then add the nails to that. So you have three cases here, iron nails, First case, both air and water. Second case, only water with an oil layer. Third case, pure dry air. And what you begin to observe in this case is that iron rusts only in case one. In other words, only water, not enough. Only air, dry air without any moisture, even as water vapor in it, even if there is none of that, no rust. It only rusts in the case where it's exposed to both air and water. Now that's interesting. It tells us something about the chemical reaction, right? What all are the ingredients required to create rust? So more on this, when you really want to learn it, you can go and find out as to what rust actually is. We're going to leave that to you for your own curiosity.